Hi, this is Mario Macari for Zenva, and in this project, we're going to develop a responsive design website using the brand new CSS module FlexibleBox or Flexbox. Having done web design for a long time, I can tell you that this is really great. This makes doing web page layout so much easier, and they really did their homework and discovered what people need to do responsive design. So with that, let's take a look at what we're about to build. Here we have our website, and we have a nav bar that is fixed to the top, and the menu row is laid out in flexible box, so it's horizontal. And then we have a big hero photograph that I picked up from Pexels, and I just gave it a title. As we scroll down the page, we have an About Me section, and then we have a Gallery section. Then I have a section here that talks about traveling, but this could easily be used for points about yourself or your business. And scrolling down, we have a testimonial section that I put quotes into. Then we have a contact section, which includes a Google map and a contact form from Google Forms. And then the footer with some social media icons in there. So hopefully this will give you a good idea of what you can do with Flexiblebox and make a nice portfolio page for yourself. I'll close this off so we can get started. So the first step of building any website is to create a folder. So I'll right click and choose new folder and then let's name this Amazing Alaska. And then I'll set the folder in the upper right hand corner of my video screen. Now things in the internet you don't use spaces for because of the Unix operating system, at least the history of it. Unix is a language that web servers use. In Unix, spaces would convert to percent %20 in the URL and you don't want percent %20 in your URL. So don't put spaces inside any of your file names or your folders. Use hyphens or underscores. Now I'll open up the program called Brackets, which you can get for free at brackets.io. And it's an open source code editor that Adobe sponsors. And the amazing thing to me is it's written in JavaScript, which really demonstrates the power of JavaScript as a programming language. So to get started, I'll move my interface to the left here, and then we'll drop the folder we just created into the sidebar. Then I'll right click in the sidebar and choose New File, and we'll name this file index.html. The name index.html is the default that the server-side language uses, in our case Unix. So when the server software is looking for a home page or something to display, it'll default to something, maybe home.html, or some other titles I can't remember right now, but index.html is a go-to name for the very first file you want to have the server load. And you can see that our index page is ready to go. We have a code line there, number one, where we can start entering HTML. Now from off camera, I'm going to bring in the IMG or the images folder, which is included with your stuff for this course. And um, let's take a look inside. Here are all the images that we'll be using on our website. Now the photographs are all from Pexels.com, so they're all public domain. And the illustrations of Dickens, Franklin, and Leonardo are from Wikipedia, and those are in the public domain as well. And I'll close off the folder and we'll drop it into our working folder. Everything you want to put on the web hosting server should be inside of this folder. So that it's not scattered all across your hard drive and you don't end up with missing links. From off camera, I will bring in a file called snippets.txt and another file called copy.txt. In the snippets file, we have a bunch of code that we're going to use inside of our web page so you don't have to type it out. And then in the copy file is all the copy that we're going to be using on the web page. And they call it copy because that's what's going to be copied. It's an old term going way back to the days of Gutenberg. So you have copywriters, which are the people that write the copy that is going to be in an advertisement or a book. And don't get that confused with copyrights, which is the legal aspect of the ownership of the information inside the file. Two similar sounding words in English. So I'll select both of these files and I'll drop them into our working folder. And immediately you can see everything we added in our working folder over in the left sidebar. Now I'll right click on the sidebar and I'll choose new file once more. In this file we will name styles.css. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets and it is a design markup language. 
So right away, when we create a web page, we have two markup languages, HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. HTML gives you structure to your page, kind of like 2x4s give the structure of a house. And inside the structure of the house, there are many things that are going on, plumbing, electrical, so on and so forth. And you cover all that up with drywall. And then once you put up the drywall, you can decorate the house. And that's what CSS is similar to. It's the ability to decorate your page. And you can also use CSS to make your page responsive so it displays easily on multiple devices. So you have these two markup languages working in conjunction with each other to make your web page. The third language we use in website building is for interactivity and for form checking and so on, and that would be JavaScript and also JavaScript frameworks like jQuery. Now a content management system like WordPress uses a fourth language and that is called PHP, and that's a server-side language, and that allows it to tie into a database. Server-side stuff is pretty much out of the scope of this course, although Zenba has courses on PHP and I recommend that you watch them. Okay, now we'll move our interface back over to the right so it takes up the full screen and we're ready to start coding our HTML. And we'll do that in the next video.